We all know that the design of Windows Whistler is one of the most aesthetic ones when it comes to beta builds, but what if that design wasn't scrapped and makes it to one of the possible released versions? Well, meet Windows 2002 by Fra4 with 4 A's or Fra3 with 3 A's. Jump into the setup process. We are greeted with the boot option, just like what Windows 9 X did. Interesting choice. But what's more interesting is that the graphical setup is from Windows Lowhorn with 53, as you can see at the bottom right of the screen. I guess Fry is that built to utilize WIM imaging for Windows installation. The installation is so short, it's just like 5 minutes in the setup footage alone, at least for me using VMware. Rebooting the OS, you can see that the boot screen graphic has been changed to use the logo for this mod, and in case you might not know, this logo was one of the proposed logos for the final version of Whistler, hence why I said simply, what if Whistler design made it to public? And what's even cooler is the logon screen. And wait until you hear the startup sound. Yeah, if you are a really long time viewer of my channel since 2017, which I think 90% of you are not, you know this sound from a mini busting video about this startup sound, which is actually a fake whistler startup sound. Beta Wiki already busted that too. Looking at the desktop, the design of the mod isn't really that far away from, I guess, Windows 2000 mods, apart from the desktop background that's changed to a custom one made by the creator. There's an additional decorational or functional objects like the icons at the desktop which essentially use the Windows 2000 layout. Channel bar that I think was originally from Windows 98 or Windows 95 with Windows desktop update, I'm not sure. The taskbar has been recolored to white, I guess we're gonna figure out later or not. <laughs> and the most awesome thing so far in my discovery was this start button, which is actually nicely designed. The logo gets colored when it's highlighted. I know this is just a mighty detail, but this is great. Now, clicking the start menu shows the start menu, obviously. And before I ask you anything, does this design strike some familiarities? Well, yeah, it is from the watercolor theme, precisely that of your 2419, with small differences like the use of small icons at the right row, the presence of a user profile image, and the more program string changed to all programs. So this feels like a more finished and polished version of the watercolor start menu design, and you'll see the recurring theme of this throughout the video. Oh yeah, check this out, Windows Explorer with the design fused between Windows 2000 and Windows XP, just like Windows Whistler. This design maintains the Windows 2000 application layout and icons such as the toolbar size and the local list icon, while also introducing layouts that would make its way to Windows XP such as the directory list layout and the task pane. Even though the task pane has a blue color scheme, unlike Whistler which is white, it's still functional just like a task pane would do. The good quality of life feature in Windows Explorer is breadcrumbs. Yes, breadcrumbs. That reminds me of Windows XP era breadcrumbs, but anyway. The breadcrumbs blends perfectly within the Explorer because it doesn't really try to mimic modern design, it just works as intended. Next, control panel. Jeez, how much did I say throughout my videos? Okay, control panel. Although the control panel uses classic view by default, it still offers category view if you want to. Most applets work just like Windows XP does, but there are additional applets such as hot pluggable devices that essentially is safely remove hardware, point of sale devices that serves as a way to configure PC that's used in grocery stores, card space that has the most out of place purpose in icon design and it doesn't even work. The weird thing about control panel is that this one includes two user accounts applets and one of them claims to be the Whistler variant which I find does not have a difference whatsoever, correct me if I'm wrong. By the way, if you haven't noticed it earlier, this mod uses the watercolor window theme too and 
Loki, I kind of prefer this than when it's XP Luna. Don't get me wrong, it's still good, but watercolor feels like perfection to me. Windows wouldn't be Windows if Microsoft didn't shove IE down the throat. This mod includes Internet Explorer version 6, and it's still displayable as I would say, like this example.com. And for some reason, the OK button in the about window of Internet Explorer clips through the window border. Uh, well, I don't know. The look of Windows Media Player is similar to Windows Me. Well, and in fact, it is a new minor version from the one in Windows Me. Speaking of the music, I feel familiar with the song. Anyway, the holy quadrinity of system applications. Those are calculator, notepad, and you gotta do what the note says. Woodpad that really begs you to click that subscribe button, which you must. And paint, which they aren't changed visually or technically. Okay, I think I want to point this out. There's Reversi. Can you believe it? Well, it's not the same Reversi as you would imagine. Different design and different version. I played it for a little bit and I stumbled upon one specific bug. When you zero out the computer, the computer will say, I pass, obviously, because there are no other moves. And it says, I lose. <laughs> wait, wait, Woohoo! What is this? Did you see that earlier? I zero you out. What? What the f Okay, this is a very funny part. I assume the developer of this reversi hasn't programmed any action for this specific case. Well, aside from that, it's pretty hilarious for me. Moving on to personalization, screensaver doesn't have any difference for me apart from the 3D maze. But theme does have some available, such as Blue Lagoon that utilizes the placeholder simplest visual style, Candy SE which uses the half done Mac OS X aqua like theme, and several other watercolor color variants. There are so many additional desktop backgrounds that you can freely choose. Window appearance does have the same thing as the old themes showed earlier, with the exception of the lunar theme, except this is not the final lunar, but the one from before release candidate. Anyways, check out these sound schemes. And also, here are several sample media such as sample music, sample pictures, and the only one, sample video. Opening the Winver, this mod is actually based on Windows XP Service Pack 3, and you can see that the logo has been changed to the one designated for this mod. This also appears within the system properties. Fun fact, the position of logo and the information are swapped. Now, time to go to system applications. Character map that's unchanged. Task manager which has minor difference in the graph right there. Windows Movie Maker version 1.05. Help and support center that has some icons that aren't pixel perfect. Chat. Front Page Express for making web pages. Customize this folder for customizing the folder view. Infrared send files. CD player. Old media player. Classic media player. Backup and restore wizard. eShell, which is a prototype UI that will envision the Windows Media Center, which also crashes Explorer. Tweak UI. Start page famously known from Windows Name Tune, Program Compatibility Wizard, Sticky Notes, MSN Messenger, Sideshow that acts somewhat like a sidebar, and finally a redesigned phone dialer. For sure, this mod is well packed with applications, add ons, themes, and customization, but I don't really feel like this is a bootleg at all because it's just aesthetically works. Note that, bootleg creator, and it's great. Man, I want more mods like this. Come on, just hit me with all the mods.